specifically, just like Agent Raleigh has been praised for doing. Look at uh, Raleigh's letter. If you were to take the letter that we received yesterday evening from the FBI, and it had to have been reviewed by the FBI director at this point because they knew Bob was out there, if you had taken this letter and juxtaposed it with Raleigh's letter, Raleigh would likely be criminally prosecuted. She'd be away for life. You can see the hypocrisy in what they're saying. And the double hypocrisy is, is that when Bob started uh, to try to get his story out through the New York Times, a reporter by the name of Judith Miller, a Pulitzer Prize award-winning reporter, I might add, one of the top reporters on terrorism, is that the FBI flew people in to meet with her and gave her whatever information, of course, in a twisted way, that she desired. But yet Bob was not allowed to talk with her. And that's why, ultimately, one of the reasons she didn't write the story. So you can see the hypocrisy here. And what Director Mueller said yesterday, it was just words. And, of course, as a consequence, the, um, they've been in the, they're in the crosshairs. Go ahead, Bob. And we have some corroboration here today uh, that we're going to provide. First of all, I'd like to say I'm not representing the FBI. Anything I say is... Uh, not supported by the FBI or the opinions of the FBI. These are my own personal opinions. What I am about to read to you, I had submitted for a pre-publication review, and uh, it was approved, and this was back in February. Since August of 1999, I've been working to legally expose the very real and foreseeable Middle Eastern terrorist threats to American citizens at home and abroad. From 1993 to 1999, I was assigned to the Chicago Division's Counterterrorism Task Force. In this capacity, I became familiar with the techniques used by international terrorist organizations to surreptitiously move money, launder money in and out of the United States, including through the use of domestic financial institutions in support of terrorist and paramilitary activities and operations in the United States and abroad, including the State of Israel and elsewhere. Against the wishes of some at the FBI in 1995, when I uncovered criminal violations of several of my cases, I promptly initiated active terrorism criminal investigations on these subjects. I developed probable cause to believe that some of these transfers or transmissions have been of money intended to be used in the support of domestic and international terrorism activities. The illegal transfers have supported specific terrorist activities involving the extortion, kidnapping, and murder of at least one Israeli citizen. The successful investigation, which was codenamed Vulgar Betrayal, V-U-L-G-A-R, Betrayal, led to the June 1998 seizure of $1.4 million of Middle Eastern terrorist funding. The seizure was the first occasion that the United States government utilized the civil forfeiture laws to seize assets in the United States. These funds were linked directly to Saudi businessman Yassin Qadi. On October 12, 2001, approximately one month after the attack, Yassin Qadi was designated by the United States government as a financial supporter of Osama bin Laden. Despite the unqualified success of the investigation of the Middle Eastern terrorists, FBI management failed to take seriously the threat of terrorism in the United States. Specifically, FBI management intentionally and repeatedly thwarted and obstructed my attempts to launch a more comprehensive investigation to identify and to neutralize terrorists. The FBI's lack of support for the Volcker betrayal investigation was obvious to my new supervisor in 1998, who after only four months of being on the squad wrote, quote, Agent Wright has spearheaded this effort despite an embarrassing lack of investigative resources available to the case, such as computers, financial leak analysis software, and a team of financial analysts. Although far from being concluded, the success of this investigation so far has been entirely due to the foresight and perseverance of Agent Wright. Close quote. Although the Volcker Betrayal investigation had been proposed for designation as a major FBI case because of its far-reaching scope in 1999 in an effort to further the terrorism investigation. I had to purchase much-needed software, computer software, and a scanner with my own funds since I was unable to obtain the necessary funding from the FBI. 
I sought to communicate my experiences, as Larry had said and David said, to Congress and others in the public interest following the September 11th attacks. However, a threat was leveled by a Department of Justice official against me through my attorneys to prevent me from meeting with members of Congress during the week following September 11th. This came from the Attorney General's office. In fact, the following morning, in order to prevent me from traveling from Washington, D.C., or to Washington, D.C., from Chicago, on my own time, I was told by the FBI division that I could not travel outside of Chicago without permission from the FBI. My efforts have always been geared towards neutralizing the terrorist threats focused on taking the lives of American citizens, in addition to harming the national and economic security of America. However, as a direct result of the incompetency and, at times, intentional obstruction of justice by FBI management to prevent me from bringing the terrorists to justice, Americans have unknowingly been exposed to potential terrorist attacks for years. Since August 1999, I have been working to legally expose the FBI's incompetence and dereliction of duty in the terrorism arena. As a result, starting in August of 1999, I began writing a manuscript. It was uh, single-spaced, 500 pages, and it was titled Fatal Betrayals of the Intelligence Mission. The manuscript outlines the FBI's intentional, at times, failure to pursue the terrorists and thereby prevent terrorist attacks. Ironically, I completed the text of the manuscript two days after the September 11th attack. On September 10th, I had all but the last three pages completed. In addition, on November 5th, 2001, through my attorneys, a 38-page complaint was filed with the United States Department of Justice, Office of Inspector General's Office, for, quote, for dereliction of duty by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in failing to investigate and prosecute terrorism and obstruction of justice and retaliating against Special Agent Robert Wright, Jr. Also on January 14th, actually February of 2002, uh, through my attorney, David Shippers, a 118-page complaint was filed with the United States Department of Justice, uh, Office of Inspector General, detailing whistleblowing retaliation by the Federal Bureau of Investigation against myself. FBI rules and regulations prohibit me from disseminating these documents to anyone, including President Bush and members of Congress, before submitting the written material to the pre-publication review unit of the FBI. Therefore, in a good faith effort to legally share the contents of all these documents with the President, members of Congress, and the American people, I have abided by the FBI's established rules and submitted the manuscript and complaints to the FBI's pre-publication review unit for review. On June 9, 2001, after questioning by friends, co-workers, and family members regarding my motive for writing this manuscript and for exposing the Bureau's dereliction of duty in the terrorism marina, I drafted a mission statement, which was completed 91 days before September 11. And I will read that to you now. That also was reviewed in, by FBI headquarters and approved. The mission statement reads, The FBI is America's top law enforcement agency, and as such, its mission is to protect America and its citizens at home and abroad. The strength of the FBI has always been in the public's trust and integrity in the quality of the FBI's investigations. However, in light of the many FBI mistakes which have surfaced during the past decade and additional mistakes which will be exposed in future legal actions and a book I'm writing entitled Fatal Betrayals of the Intelligence Mission, America's confidence level in the FBI will further erode. However, as a nation, we must work together in seeking to regain the confidence level we once had in the FBI to achieve its vital mission of protecting the safety and welfare of its citizens at home and abroad. The FBI is going through a difficult time. However, I'm confident the FBI and the American people can overcome these difficulties. Together, we can and must resolve the difficult issues surrounding the problems within the FBI. America cannot afford to have its top law enforcement agency continue to be lax in areas fundamental to the national security of this country. I love America, and I love the FBI, particularly its purpose and its mission. However, the mission has been seriously jeopardized, in my opinion, to the point that American lives have been needlessly lost. 
Accordingly, I'm seeking a thorough review and complete house cleaning to identify and fix the FBI's problems, whether they be managers, agents, procedures, policies, 